guys welcome back to my channel for another episode of porn star confessions today i've got the man the myth the legend gavin strong welcome Devin. hello thank you for having me so how did you get your start in porn um my the first well studio um it started like two years ago um and I shot with the guy site. Are you familiar with the guy site? Oh. Yeah. So that was my first, first studio. But I did like amateur content for a while before that, like on my own. And But I've done um, like um, sex work related stuff for a long time. Uh, like escorting and like go-go dancing and stuff since I um, got done wrestling in college. So I was like probably like 21 when I started doing all that. So how old are you now? I'm going to turn 28 in like a week. <laughs> I know everyone thinks I'm old. <laughs> everyone thinks I'm like, you know, like 40 or something. Well, no, like, okay, the reason why I can't believe your age is like I'm looking at it from like the bodybuilder point of view and like, Typically, your muscles don't reach their maturity till like mid, early thirties. So I'm like, when you told me your age, I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, if your muscles haven't fully matured yet, what are you going to be like, the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> Hopefully, so. I mean, there's a lot of growing to do for sure. I, I've lifted weights forever, but definitely a lot of uh, uh, maturing to do still with that sort of thing. So how did you get into bodybuilding? Um, so I started working out when I was like 12. Um, my parents were, were large, crazy people, um, but they were definitely good at like um, athletics and uh, they were D1 athletes. I was a D1 athlete and um, so I'd always been a weightlifter uh, since I was like a kid and was never really a bodybuilder uh, specifically. And then kind of started, I'm still kind of figuring out how to bodybuild, honestly. I have to like, you know, I'm staying with my friend here and he, uh, he's, you know, insightful and in like actual bodybuilding training. And so tr still trying to figure out how to train like a bodybuilder <laughs> specifically, but, um, always been like a weightlifter, you know, <laughs> dude, but you're like what? Three, three, ten. I, I stay around, so I, you know, I always say it, like, I'm 310. I stay between, like, 285 and 310 is, like, where I float, um, depending on, like, you know, what's what's going on. <laughs> but I, I stay between, like, 285 and 310. That's right. So if you don't want me asking, like, I, I'm always curious, like, what attracted you to bodybuilding specifically? Like, why did you, you know... Um, I think, uh, so I think I just like, I'm pretty introverted and I like, um, just being able to kind of train on my own and not really depend too much on being around other people. Uh, there's like college wrestling and those sports. Um, you can, yeah, you can't get as much done on your own. I mean, and you still need like help from insightful people with bodybuilding, but you definitely need to be, um, Around, yeah, there's just you can't avoid um, a lot of like social interaction with other sports. I feel like um, with bodybuilding, I kind of throw my headphones in and just train and do my thing. I think that's a big appeal of it to me, and just like having structure um, daily is nice, and just little goals to look forward to. Yeah. yeah, I never actually thought about it from that that angle ever. No, why do you bodybuild? <laughs> Like, for me, it was just, it's a psychological need to be big enough and strong enough that things that happened when I was a kid don't ever happen again. So it's like my cool. security blanket, if you will. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, if I was 150 pounds, I'd probably have a nervous breakdown. Like, literally, I wouldn't even be able to function. Right. So, that makes sense, too. You know, it's just... That sounds, it's valid. <laughs> yeah, no, I that was... <laughs> It's interesting you just answered that, but that's something I ask every single, you know, performer that I, I talk to is, 
you know, are you more introverted or more extroverted? Mm. And to this day, 100% of the people who are like super successful and like really take off in this industry, they're all introverts. Every single one of them. Yeah. I always joke like, uh, porn's like a bunch of like good looking, like theater kids. It's like a bunch of like, you know, weird, zany, like quirky, like <laughs> potentially autistic kids, you know, that are like, um, maybe not all socially there, but kind of found a different means of, um, you know, monetizing their existence and success. Wow. Okay. And like, frankly, just being totally honest, like one of the reasons I really, really want to interview you is just because like you break so many you know, stereotypes and like, you know, cause I, I feel like, you know, when people look at you, you know, they see the tattoos, they see the sides they are like, Oh, look at this, you know, dumb meathead or like, Oh, I wonder if he's an ex con or, you know, all kinds of like <laughs> negative shit, but you're sure. literally like the polar opposite of all those things. Like even someone who just looks at your Twitter feed, you're just like, damn, this dude's like super complex and super deep. And like, Oh, oh I appreciate it. So, like, do you find yourself constantly trying to, you know, dispel people's assumptions about you based on your appearance? Um, I guess to some degree. I know, like, in my daily life, like, in my personal life, I don't worry about it too much. Um, I definitely worry about, like, diffusing conflicts by sort of making sure I'm like gentle and like nice to be around because I feel as though people could be like intimidated by me. So I always try to be like warm and kind. Um, so I think in that way, I kind of do that. I, I'll kind of like try to combat um, whatever assumptions people might have about me in that way. But yeah, definitely. I mean, I like to kind of play with the, that sort of stuff. Like, um, on my social media, for sure, I definitely go out of my way to, um, it's like a, you know, it's a writing project and also like a project in that way of kind of, um, I don't trying to be subversive in a lot of ways like that, I guess, for sure. How did you get into writing? Because writing is not something that, you know, <laughs> too many people can do. I mean, it's definitely like a skill set of its own. I think same as um, working out, um, you know, I kind of like, when I was young, I kind of started working out to sort of, um, as a lot of people do, like um, deal with like anxiety or um, just general aimlessness and um, writing for me kind of came about at the same time as lifting. Um, so I was always um, journaling as a kid, like a lot, like daily journaling. And writing poems like I'd be in class I did it I wasn't a good student at all but I was always like instead of doing my assignments you know I'd write like yeah I was always writing prose and poems and um, journals to myself and journal entries um, and just uh, general like prompts that would come to me I've always kind of written like um, essay style prompts on like just concepts that would come to me I've just always loved writing I've just always loved writing. So it's never been something, and same with working out, like people like, you know, people probably ask you like how you stay so consistent working out. You kind of just love working out, you know, and it's a part of you. So uh, for me, writing and lifting definitely are just something I've always done. Wow. Like, did, did you have like a really good English teacher, professor, or just? Um, I had a couple in college. Uh, that but not I don't think anyone that ever like compelled me to write more I think I was always like um compelled to write and you know my dad was a big reader I was never a big reader but my dad always like um venerated a lot of these writers and like loved these writers and was always like giving me quotes and sharing a lot of really great writers with me and I think maybe that inspired me um to write but I don't know I didn't. I definitely didn't have bad English teachers, but definitely, um, yeah, nothing that stands out in terms of like inspiring me to write more. Maybe, maybe there's a couple professors that were cool, though. I don't know. Was there like any particular book or poem where it's like, you know, hmm. that's it? 
you know, I, again, I'm not like an amazing reader, which is kind of like almost like a source of shame for me. <laughs> I, w I wish I was like um, a more <laughs> like diverse reader. I was more, um, what's this, studied in that way, I guess. Um, but my dad read a lot of, um, he loved Charles Bukowski and he loved um, a lot of uh, like really dark Russian writers like uh, Solzhenitsyn um, and like uh, Tolstoy uh, so I have um, you know some influences from that but not even so much directly from like reading it as much as just like having to listen to all of it for, like via my father um, so so I, probably some like um, indirect <laughs> inspiration more than anything from like those kind of writers and like I've read a bit of all, all of them and um, and it kind of explored that to, to gain a greater understanding of my dad, I guess. Um, but I don't, yeah, it's like, it's really like shameful. I wish I, for me, cause <laughs> I would, people are such good readers and people always, you know, I'm like, oh, I wish I, I need to read more. I just don't have like the attention span <laughs> to read, be a good reader. It's hard for me. I'm, this is more for me. I'm genuinely curious. Like, The, I'm basically this is my way of asking you this, but like for me, the hardest part of writing was always like if I had an English essay, I could edit it 50 times and I could still find shit that was wrong with it. So, how do you deal with that? Where you're just like, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so, you know, for me, um, like my writing process uh i kind of answered this the other day. like someone asked me like sometimes i like to write um and even like we'll post things without editing and sort of like and maybe it's just a way to like uh, rationalize having shitty writing out there but i'm like this writing like represents a moment um of like feeling so i'll like you know write whatever i write and then allow it to just be what it is um huh. And, and for me, I, I, it's kind of like a practice. I'm like, this is what I was feeling in this moment. And this is like my unedited sort of like stream of consciousness. Um, so a lot of what I post is that. Uh, and then I will take time to edit things, though, too. Like, I'll look at it and I'll kind of try to, like, feel different things as I write. Um, maybe listen to different music and, like, re rewrite the same thing and see if I can, like, um, filter it down and sort of. Uh, figure out like the core essence of what I was trying to write and maybe make it more concise. Um, maybe see if I can think about like the audience and writing to more. Like sometimes I'm like deliberately like really esoteric and I'm like, I don't care if anyone can understand this, <laughs> you know, and, and other times I'm like, well, I really want this to be as understood by as many people as possible. So I'll think about how to do that. Um, and a lot of writing, I, you know, I should, I don't share like on those platforms I was talking about this too i'll use like because twitter there's obviously like the word limit yeah. and same with instagram so a lot of times like those have been good writing practices for like how can i relay this idea in like a very concise way um or like you know I'll write something very big and then it's like okay now i have to whittle this down to fit within like this little tiny format so i'll see like um, you know, I'll pick and choose, like, okay, what's going to fit to, like, kind of get to the heart of what I want to talk about. And then I might send the larger writing to myself or something. But um, in terms of, like, how I know when it feels good, I don't know. Um, sometimes I'll post something, then I'll be like, fuck, and I'll go back and, like, delete it or edit it even because I'll see something in it that's, you know, <laughs> like, I don't, you know, I'll continue to edit sometimes. <laughs> gotcha. And you're pansexual, correct? That's how you yeah, I would yeah, I would say so. Like pan fluid, bi. I identify like any of those are fine. For like um, identify as any of that, yeah. And sorry, this is totally random, but like I've never been to Planet Fitness, but I've noticed Planet Fitness in the background of a lot of your <laughs> yeah, pictures. That's funny. How in God's name, and this is going based off stories I've heard, how in God's name do they even let you in the front door? Because I, I oh, would just God. imagine they'd start setting off the lunk alarm as soon as they saw you 30 feet out. 
but you know i've been lucky with the plan because i travel a lot and sometimes i'm just somewhere when there's like no other gym to go to i'm like okay i'll go to a plant that's probably where the selfies are from planet fitness is just like me traveling but so far i've been lucky I, i mean i haven't had any negative planet fitness experiences yet it's all been like yeah they don't care (laughs) so far so far um no nothing bad yet but okay we'll see you know knock on wood i guess because i've heard those stories too but yeah i don't know oh wow okay so i'm curious like how have you managed the crossover that you've done uh crossover in terms of like you know, because a lot of the times there's, you know, once you shoot any type of gay porn, it kind of excludes you from shooting anything else. Sure. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I was kind of celebrating that internally the other day that I've been kind of able to do more. A lot of it, I think, has to do with the fact people are able to do so much amateur content now. And um, I think I have been lucky to, I don't know, I'm sort of a wholesome person. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of like women, like rightly so, are very, it's a very like um, guarded and protected community to work with women. Um, Cause there's a lot of predatory men that will take advantage of that. So I think just like word of mouth and people being, you know, I got like a couple chances to work with, like it, like one of my first like big girls that big like names I worked with was Siri Dahl, um, who her, her like Netflix documentary just came out yesterday. She was in that Netflix documentary. Oh, you're talking about the Pornhub one, right? Yeah, yeah. She's like one like the cover of that, but she was like one of the first like big name girls. Uh, what is that called? A uh, money shot. Yeah, yeah, money shot. But she's like one of the big people in there being interviewed. But she, um, you know, I got to work with her and like just like leaving good impressions and like becoming good friends with people like that. And then like word of mouth, like she being able to talk to other female performers and being like, yeah, Davin's a great guy. Um, very respectful. Like you're going to be safe with him. Um, goes a long way. Um, and I've just managed to like navigate, like not being again, knock on wood. I've never gotten like caught up in any sort of like drama on which you see all the time with all these performers on, Twitter and just all this nonsense. And I've, I've kind of been able to just, you know, I'm, I'm introverted, I'm low key, and I just kind of fly under the radar and try to be respectful and nice and be tactful and kind of do my thing. And I think it's worked out in that way. Wow. That's <sighs> okay. I'll preface this thing question by saying I'm speaking from personal experience was you don't have to go into any detail or anything or please if it's too personal just say it's too personal Mm -hmm. i found that people who grow up to become more of the gentle giant protector like did you suffer some type of trauma or abuse and that's what oh man there's there's like extensive story and (laughs) trauma for sure but yeah i go i mean i and that comes through in a lot of my writing too and I'm always like super candid about like, um, yeah, definitely just like the trials of, um, definitely very, um, tumultuous upbringing for sure. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely very complex though. I, I always say like, I'm lucky that, um, cause some people just like were victims of just like, uh, kind of hapless chaos and trauma. And I, I mean, I had that, but I also had like a very complex, and thoughtful father um who was also like um he gave me a lot of trauma but I, he also gave me like a lot of insight and um uh, a lot of tools for sure um but yeah definitely lots of trauma lots of layers there <laughs> for sure as uh, you know and so many people like um i guess across the board i was gonna say in like this industry but i just like i don't feel like that is accurate in terms of just like, I think it's just everyone, <laughs> you know, just everybody. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously everyone's been through something. It's just, you know, in, in my personal experience, like people who've had horrific like childhoods, 
you know, some grow up and become the abuser and then others grow up and kind of, you know, for sure, become the protector. Yeah, I think so too. I, do you, have you, uh, I gave that comp, you know, Yenny the Dom, have you talked to him or do you see him on Twitter? Doesn't sound familiar. He's a really cool guy, but I gave him the same compliment yesterday. I was like, you're just like the nicest guy. And he's like been through, you know, like he is like 23 and he, another college athlete and like army vet and then like went through leukemia and he's just like the sweetest like most humble guy ever but i said the same thing it's like you know people it seems that that way that you either like are given hardships and learn to become like more loving and gentle or you kind of become a dick you know (laughs) but he's a super nice guy but I, i yeah you know i've always i appreciate that like i definitely um yeah i would try to become more gentle and loving all the time for sure what do you think led you this way though as a result because that's always been something that's fascinated me like why can you take two people who've been through you know the same experience or very similar one goes this way one goes that way like was there a defining moment you know or anything Hmm. for you i think there's probably a lot of defining moments i think i've had times where um i've been very much um, a bit of an asshole or like had too much of a chip on my shoulder and been, you know, I had I kind of I actually wrote about this the other day too, just kind of like getting caught up and like having something to prove like, oh, I'm going to be the biggest and the baddest and the best and everyone can fuck off and, <laughs> you know, and just kind of like that just being an exhausting strain on my existence and not really, um, like a meaningful way to live one like it's not like meaningful it didn't it doesn't and it's also just um well yeah i guess that that sums it up it just wasn't a meaningful way to live i think also too like looking at um like all the you know again like my dad is an example like my dad uh and i talk about my dad a lot super candid like killed himself five years ago um and like super you know super dark thing but it's like um his life was also sort of defined by like um, kind of like, you know, his own traumas and that bitterness and kind of being a bit of an asshole, (laughs) you know, and it certainly did not serve him or like give him any sort of peace or like healing. And um, yeah. And I guess not wanting that for myself, right? Like I, I would like to have peace and healing and I don't think that comes from like being resentful or um, angry uh you know and unkind to people um both in like the spiritual sense and also in like a literal sense like all that does is uh burn bridges and create enemies and um ruins connections with people and i've been really lucky to have like um just like really you know a lot of grief and like as you i mean i'm moving through my 20s so you like figure out like who your people are but i've been lucky to find like a lot of really cool people and connections and i don't think that would have happened if i was an asshole you know (laughs) i I don't yeah no i mean that's so true like i've always believed you know life's too short to be pissed off all the time Mm -hmm. and like uh i don't know that one of those moments for me have you seen the movie american history act oh yeah where yeah where the principal is in prison talking to him and he asked, you know, Derek, he's like, has anything you've done made your life better? Mm. And that was one of those, damn, that's... He's like, oh, man. <laughs> right. It's like, no, shit. And like, yeah. no, it's it's crazy. Like, it, I, I'm sure your dad played a role in this, but where did your, like, introspection and whatnot come from? Because... I'm just guessing here, but I'm guessing critical self-evaluation is, is one of your strong suits. Uh, I, you know, that that's kind of, I, I like to think so, but yeah, you definitely um, guessed it with dad for sure. Um, again, like a complex guy, he was a therapist. So, I mean, there you go in terms of like the, the whole like introspection thing. And also just like, he was super into like, I think like the early 2000s, like, I don't know, I guess the exact timeline on it, but just kind of like the new age sort of healing, like holistic approach to 
therapy and like crystal healing and like <laughs> that that kind of shit and like he was like reading tarot but he was always like um it, it was just a weird uh eclectic environment and definitely pushed me to um think critically and evaluate um, myself for sure and something i've continued to try to do um for sure as i've moved through my life so I'm just going to guess here, but I'm guessing if I were to ask you to name your best attributes that your physical body wouldn't even be on the top 10 of the list. Well, I don't know. I, I think it's up there. It makes me a lot of money. <laughs> it makes me money, which allows me to live for sure. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I meant like in personal. It's kind of. Yeah. Not, not I, I don't, yeah. Um, you know, I definitely value my body, but I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I appreciate it, though. No, I just, I, like, I just, I love how you break so many stereotypes. It's just, it's, frankly, very refreshing. No, oh, I appreciate it. So, I'm curious, has porn, how has porn affected, ugh, affected your private sex life off camera, for better or for worse? Um, I definitely really like value my casual sex life, but in terms of, yeah, I mean, I've just been like, yeah, the romantic relationships are kind of hard to, <laughs> you know, cling on to. It's hard to find. Yeah. You know, I'm still in the midst of that, you know, um, trying to find, find like, um, sustainability with that, like someone who's like comfortable, um, with everything I'm doing, but yeah, I definitely, you know, I enjoy uh my work and i enjoy like doing a variety of everything i have fun with it um but in terms of like it can be you know it is work at the end of the day so it can it cannot it's not always like fulfilling in terms of like intimacy and connection um so something i still definitely value for my casual sex life is that for sure yeah and i ask this to everyone but have you had difficulty in your private sex life as far as like, let's say you meet someone and you feel like you can't be you because they want the Davin strong experience. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think they, um, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't, I think they, uh, yeah, maybe they expect that, but I, I don't think, um, anyone's ever confessed to that because I'm pretty much just like myself right off rip. <laughs> so it's like, you know, <laughs> they kind of get what they get in terms of, in terms of that. And if they don't like me, I guess we don't have a second date <laughs> or something. You know? you know what I mean? Like, I don't really know. <laughs> so in, in your private life, what are your favorite two positions? Cause I've, I've found most performers will do all kinds of positions on camera, but in their private life, it's kind of like one or two. Yeah, I'm vanilla, dude. Uh, I'll do. I'm also lazy, <laughs> so, so missionary is good. And anything where I don't have to move is good. I'm like, I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm laughing my ass off because I'm the exact same. <laughs> yeah, it's like minimal effort is good. Yeah, missionary and writing. That that's sure. Yeah, give me those. I'm good. Exactly. Yeah, minimal effort. Yeah, the the studios are crazy. Sometimes I'm like, there's no way anyone would do this. Like, <laughs> you know, like no one's doing another way to do that shit. Like in reality, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's looking good on camera and actually, you know, it's theory versus practice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The functionality of a lot of stuff is like questionable for sure. I'm guessing you get asked to do a lot of hanging garden where you're like holding your partner up. I've done that a few times, like, and that that's not even, like, so bad. It's more, like, like the one there's, I mean, the, the guy said I won't care. I always talk shit to the director because he always wants guys to do, like, the reverse, like, cowgirl fucking, like, your hands, like, back. And it's, like, no one bends. Like, all these big bodybuilders, like, we're not, like, flexible enough to, like, do that shit. <laughs> so I'm, like, this is impossible, like... <laughs> It's absolutely impossible. But the standing stuff, as long as it's not like I'm picking up another like fucking 200 plus pound person or something, yeah. it's all good. But yeah. 
<laughs> That's hilarious. And so you are pretty outspoken about being poly, correct? Yeah, it's what I've been doing. Like I guess now, like mostly solo poly shit for like I guess four years. Um, but yeah, that's my preferred sort of situation for sure. What do you mean by solo poly? Uh, just like general. I haven't been. Well, I've had a couple partners, but like I guess I sort of date, but I'm not like partnered. Um, but like I'm still like dating multiple people or trying to date people who are poly and that sort of thing. And what's your experience been like with that? The the reason why I'm asking the poly questions is like of the people who watch this channel, there's like half that are like monogamous and think poly is a ticking time bomb. And then there's the other half that are like raw, raw poly. So like, I'm always super curious to hear, you know, as much as possible about it. Yeah. I'm not really like, um, hard set on even like, you know, maybe there'd be someone who made me feel comfortable enough that I would be monogamous and be like, oh, this feels nice. And like, it'd be like a monogamish thing. Like, we, oh, look, we'll have a third sometimes or something like or like, you know, go on a date sometimes like that'd be cool. Like, um, but no, I'm not in like any like hard school of thinking like one one is better than the other. I think it just depends on like the person and um, the person you're with and you know negotiating what works like obviously there's people who are like monogamous and happy um and poly and happy i i think relationships across the board are just like complex and hard like no, no matter what you know they're all sort of it's funny like man, i don't know if i would feel i feel disingenuous to be monogamous and call like polyamory um a ticking time bomb given like divorce rates and <laughs> and whatnot but <laughs> teach their own they're, they're both ticking time bombs i feel like relationships are just like tumultuous and rough and communication's hard and um yeah they're just hard relationships are hard for sure <laughs> so do you feel like your profession makes dating more difficult yeah for sure um definitely i think um definitely and i think and I guess, you know, I'm still young and dating and like I haven't had a lot of opportunity to date people who are like experienced with poly. And I think that's a big thing, too, because I've dated a lot of people that have generally been like um, monogamous and then be like, oh, you're like a really nice guy. I'd like to try this for you. And that's generally not like a, that's kind of a ticking time bomb. <laughs> that's generally not a recipe for success. Be, you know, you, especially with my work, for sure, it's just. It's hard because that's sort of a thing I can't compromise at all. Yeah. No, I, I I got on the dating apps a while ago, and I felt like people fell into one of two categories. Either A, I am an amusement park ride, or B, no, I can't handle that. Right. And it's like, wait, great. Compromise a little bit, yeah. And compromise a little bit. Yeah, compromise is key for sure, and like figuring out like, what compromises feel good and if they feel sustainable. But yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm of the opinion like monogamy and poly, like those are flu like that can be fluid too, right? Like you can be like committed to someone and you could be dating other people with them and then be like, oh, this doesn't feel good and then be monogamous with them. And then like, I think we're ready to hang out with other people again. You know, it doesn't have to be this like hard set thing, you know, as long as you're like, you can be pliable as long as you're both like negotiating together and communicating. I think that's the bottom line, regardless of like the relationship style. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what makes relationships hard. It's hard to find people that can do that with you in a way that feels good. Yeah. So what would your ideal partner be like, you know, personality wise, age wise? I don't know. I don't know. I've thought a lot about that, I guess, but, um, I don't know. I think um could look a lot of different ways. I have, I have an easy time loving people, so I guess it could look a, it could look like a lot of different people, but it definitely have to be um good at communicating and kind of figuring things out with me for sure. <laughs> yeah. So communication by far the most important. I think so, like being honest and like forthcoming and gentle with that, you know. 
like because you can be honest and forthcoming but be a dick but i think <laughs> you know but so like a like a balance of all of that would be would be good like um knowing what they need and what they want and what feels good for them i think that's an issue with a lot of like i guess any relationship is people like thinking they're comfortable with something and not being really certain with what they need and not setting boundaries um and then like letting resentment you know stew and brew up and then for all sorts of stuff you know so probably someone a little older and more like not older older but like between like 30 and some age <laughs> you know who kind of has more of an idea of what they need and want and um a little more versed ideally like have had a few more relationships under their belts i think i've mostly dated people that are well i guess like between like 22 and like 32 um and i think that has more to do with like the shortcomings of my relationships or other than poly or monogamy it's just we've all been young and figuring ourselves out you know yeah no i get that i've i personally always preferred older people for that reason because at least with an older person what you see is what you get like, <laughs> yeah trying to take it or leave it you know then right. change um no i i feel like i don't know how i want to say this uh Damn it. No, I just had a brain fart again. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> but, like, you talk... One thing you talk a lot about, I've noticed, is, like, fluidity. Where mm -hmm. else do you feel like that applies to that you're passionate about? You know, not just, like, sexuality or relationship. Um... I have to think about it. I, I'm sure it comes through in a lot of ways. I guess, so like, oh, well, I guess not one big way has kind of been like my life path has been very fluid in terms of like, I guess I was talking about this or writing about this the other day too. Like my plant, like when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a pro fighter and that's like why I started like training so hard. Like, well, part of it, you know, it was like mental health thing, but like I was a wrestler and I was like, I'm going to be a fighter and then kind of allowing like um, myself to be fluid in my purpose in terms of like, I didn't want to force things. I feel like a lot of people, if their plan A doesn't work out, they're just like, call it good. And then they, you know, go to work, you know, they go do whatever they have to do. And I was always kind of like rolling with the punches in that way, I guess. So I was like, well, I quit college wrestling. So now I'm going to like, I'm going to go try to be a model. And then I'm going to, I had like, I got sent to the WWE by this sponsor. And I was like, this isn't for me. I'm going to go be a Chippendale. I'm like, I don't think this is it. I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I'm like kind of rolling with the punches along like the same like genre, like within the same, like, you know, I'm using my body, but I was like fluid in like terms of how I was going to do that to like monetize my bodybuilding, my existence, like me being, you know, wanting to be, just be in the gym, you know? So is that I'm totally guessing and assuming here, but would I be correct in assuming that you're really not the type that could work for someone else? That you need to have, you need to be in control of your own destiny, if you will. Yeah, I think so. I think that was like, yeah, I think so. I think that was my issue with a lot of like, yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like what I was saying about the gym, being able to throw my headphones in and train. I didn't like, um, I liked high school wrestling. I didn't like college wrestling. It's a lot more pressure and like there's these, you know, patriarchs above you like that are very like intense and I didn't like that structure and I didn't, I never liked the structure of school. And yeah, I didn't like the idea of like the WWE, um, if that manifested, like kind of picking my persona and kind of pushing me in a mainstream direction and sort of limiting my ability to express myself. So I would, I, I would agree. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's some job out there that would work for me. I'm sure I could be like, I don't know if it, if something would work, but <laughs> all that stuff. No, no. A lot of these questions I'm asking, I'm asking cause I see like a lot of myself in you. So I'm, I'm curious. Cause one thing I've talked about a lot on this channel is like coming out as gay or coming out as bisexual and just, you know, uh, embracing who you are and, you know, just whether, you know, cause like me, you, 
I'm sure plenty of people don't find us attractive. You know what I mean? There's no one body type where everyone's like, oh, you know. Right. So I'm curious, like, because one thing that I noticed from you is you're very, like, unapologetically yourself. You're just like, fuck it. This is who I am. You know, you, you bury your soul. And I think that's very admirable. So my question to you is, especially for the people watching, like, can you walk through your journey? Because tons and tons and tons of people would kill to be where you're at. So, you know, what was your step-by-step guide to getting there? In terms of, like, my journey in terms, like, specifically in regards to, like, my, like, uh, sexuality or... Well, just, um... yeah, I mean, like, your your sexuality just, you know... uh you know, for example, like your nails, not a lot of guys would be comfortable, you know, painting their nails, like just the sexuality part, but also just you being you and saying, this is me. Like, you're not trying to like, oh, I need to act this way because society thinks this or society thinks sure. that. Okay. Um, I guess for me as a whole, I guess, yeah, I, I was talking about this today too. I think it all stems to sort of like, back, all back to that sort of introspection and like trying to like discern a higher purpose for myself. And um, like, as I've learned more about myself, uh, I think a lot about my mortality <laughs> and I think a lot about um, like how I, I'm going to feel about my life and like what will matter to me and I and and all this time I wasted like wanting to impress like these coaches or impress these people and none of it really um mattering in any way that was of any like spiritual significance so I get I guess for me it's just like when I think about like my life's purpose and meaning it's um just like all just tied to becoming more myself and sort of detaching myself from a lot of um really needing validation from people other than like people who i hold and like very dear to my heart and who are like very close to me and general and anybody i hold that close to me is not going to care about like my nails being painted or like really anything i do they'll just be like oh that's you know davin's doing his thing <laughs> you know um so I, I guess that's like how i got there just like a continual just like journey of like understanding myself and like what matters and yeah I hope, hopefully that makes sense but i think i think that's but like how did you separate it in your mind like how did you finally like let go and you're just you know what it's just me versus me like and you i guess how did you drown out the voices of society or you know like all that hmm. I, maybe a lot of grieving, like a lot of grief was part of it. I've been thinking a lot about grief the last couple of years, but I think I grieved a lot of like the sensation of failure, failure traditionally, like failing, um, you know, as like a college athlete or like failing, like growing up around like these cowboys and like, like processing that I failed whatever, you know, pre like whatever a man's supposed to be to them and like kind of coming to terms with that and i think maybe the more i like process that grief and move through that anger um and kind of again like it was like that choice of like be being more angry or like finding a way to be loving um and i think like yeah just becoming myself um and learning to love myself was definitely in line with like loving other people and being gentle and yeah, and I think I think that's all like a lot really tied to grief, and I think I still do grieve, and like I still do, you know, I still move through that like resentment and like um, uh, those feelings of failure, and like um, yeah, yeah, I still I still am processing that, but um, I don't know if there's like a defining moment um, as much as I've just been like moving through that and like growing and healing through that, and. Um, I don't think there was like a moment it clicked. I think it's all just been like a slow like evolution of healing for myself and like processing all this stuff, like my spirituality and like all these people I feel that I've, you know, I haven't met their whatever standards they had, who, 
a lot of people I really respected. Um, yeah, just moving through that all slowly, processing, grieving, healing, forgiving myself, being kind to myself, um, not wanting to like repeat the failures of my father and die bitter and angry, <laughs> you know? So a lot of just processing that kind of stuff, I think. But yeah, I don't think there was like a defining like moment. Um, there's probably like a lot of like, I think, um, sorry to ramble at you, but a lot of, uh, uh, there's like a few like, quint like I can identify like a few key moments of like extreme pain, <laughs> perhaps, or like where I was at kind of a breaking point in terms of my resentment and anger and pain, or I, like, you know, I had to like process even harder. Um, but even then I still think that was like an evolution. Dude, are you sure you're not like 44? <laughs> I, I don't know. I appreciate it. Like, mm, an old man. I'm curious though, like, super curious where your awareness of mortality comes from. It, the reason why I ask this <laughs> is because, like, most 20 year olds are still in their, like, yeah, like, I'm immortal. Fuck, uh, you know. I have unlimited time, all this and that. Usually it's not till someone hits 40 that they're like, oh shit, there's only so much time left. Do you see what me I'm and, at? Me and the uh, friend and our other mutual friend we trained with today were talking about this, but it definitely stems from like trauma. <laughs> like, you know, just like, I think just anxiety and just like, um, I was like, <laughs> I guess a little more lore, like fixated on death from the time I was like, able to have thoughts i was just like you know always always anxious about my death so i feel like i had to um start that process really quickly and then in addition to like actual like tangible danger and trauma on top of like me you know being um innately just like extremely anxious uh it started you know getting my gears turning about um death and mortality quite a bit but I've started to balance that too with like enjoying my existence <laughs> as well. You know, there's, I think there's, um, yeah, balance to be had there, uh, for sure. Oh, so was, and this comes from one of my subscribers. Can you think of one single, like life changing defining moment over the course of your life? Oh, there's so many. I don't know. Yeah, there couldn't be a single one. There's so many. Yeah. I don't know. There's been so many even like, there's so many as a kid and there's so many. I've been through so much. I think that's why maybe I appear old. I've like had, you know, that guy, There's a, his name's Ed Connors. He's this popular bodybuilding sponsor, but he always tells me, I mean, he's like 90 years old and he's always, he's very he's very kind to me, but he's always told me like, I've lived as much life as he has and he's had quite the storied life, but I've had a lot of like experiences crammed into a, you know, a short amount of time <laughs> for sure. But I, I guess, you know, my dad's death was like significant um, for sure. I think that especially defining of like my transition from like, cause he died when I was, I think I had turned 22. So that, yeah, it was not even that it's like six years ago now, but I think like I even got, I was old then and I got like rapidly old. <laughs> like after that <laughs> you know um so i think that was definitely um and there was so many after that even though too because that was just like triggered so much um it was a catalyst for a lot more like defining moments i think so was your dad kind of like a reverse role model in a lot of ways and, and what I mean by that is like, you're looking at him do ABC and you're like, okay, I'm not going to do ABC. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like, um, yeah, I benefited from that a lot because I feel like he and I are a lot alike and um, I empathize with him a lot. He made like a lot of horrible mistakes and um, yeah, definitely. I could definitely see how I would you know, do the same. Um, he, I'm definitely lucky that I had him as my dad versus, you know, I, yeah, I feel like I'd be like, he's just me. If I, um, didn't have like an example <laughs> to follow, you know, of what not to do or what to do, you know, um, at least I see it that way sometimes. Gotcha. And 
Would I be correct in assuming that you don't drink or do drugs? No, I mean, socially, sometimes I generally don't drink. I drink like every couple months, so I'll have like two okay. or three, but yeah. Okay, I'm, we're just going to call that not drinking. Though. Yeah, I don't really drink or do drugs, no. I don't so, do any party drugs or anything, no. Okay, so I'm curious. How did you go through some of the traumatic experiences and whatnot that you, how, because like, you're familiar with like the negative spiral, you know, or an upward spiral. How did you prevent from going into that negative spiral after some of those events? Because it's very easy to be like, I really don't like the way I'm feeling and let me turn to this substance and then it just you know, goes down the tube. Like, how did you find that, you know? I, I think, um, well, I think, again, like, speaking of, like, on my mom's side, like, all, like, meth addicts and, like, schizophrenia and, like, despair. <laughs> so, like, there it was, like, um, that, that example for what not to do. But I think, again, I've also, I've just kind of always been, like, tunnel vision in terms of this, like, idea of, like, a higher purpose for myself that's connected to like that fluidity of like doing whatever I'm going to do with my body and my writing. And I just like, even when I've been like really sad, I've always been committed to, you know, I'm like, I got to go to the gym. I got to figure out my diet. I got to, you know, keep writing. Like even when I've been like, you know, on super unfortunate times, like it's just always like, I'm like, that's the only way I'm going to, you know, live in a way that's going to mean anything to me. So like, there's just no other choice. Like, uh, I mean, it's dark, but I, 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 I mean, I, there just be, there's no other alternative. Like, there's no like, yeah, there's no. If it's not bettering like my those goals that I have in my head, then it's just there's no other. <laughs> there's just never been another alternative. Damn, dude, I. Like I, I knew I was gonna enjoy doing this interview, but frankly, you've taken my expectations and far surpassed them. Like, I'm just. Oh. Like like half the shit that's coming out of your mouth, I don't believe your age. I'm like, normally forty year olds are lucky to like reach this level of self actual actualization. <laughs> like it's just wow. Like Jesus, I'm just I'm impressed. Uh so like one of my favorite quotes, and I think you'll like this, Mike Tyson. Discipline is doing what you hate to do, but doing it like you love it. Like, when it comes to your writing in your gym, and I mean this in a positive way, would I be correct in assuming that when you wake up in the morning, it's pretty much like your feelings don't matter. It's this, this, this has to be done, and we're doing this, this, and this, regardless of how we feel. That's uh, at least with gym and writing, those I love, but like with diet, yes. For sure, that's definitely been a mentality I've had to have with like my nutrition. It's just like be like, yeah, no matter how I'm feeling, like I'm on point with that. Like, no matter how shitty I feel, I'm like, yeah. If I have to like diet down and be starving, I'll be feeling like shit and starving. <laughs> it's just like, you know how it goes. Diet's the hardest one for me with that, but yeah, def that's definitely kind of how I approach it. It's like, oh, this is what it is. You know, I gotta I gotta do it. So, where do you want to be in five, ten years? Um, I would like to be, um, have like a larger passive income, which I guess is like kind of. I'd like to be stable financially in a way where I can, um, maybe not do as much studio stuff and kind of focus more on writing and, um, and I'd like to branch out from being like a. I'd want to focus more on like um more just like fitness oriented stuff with my physique. Um, and not, a, I'd, I'd like to achieve some stuff with bodybuilding and like some really big strength goals by my early thirties and then kind of just bury it in terms of like trying to be like as big and muscular and strong as I can be doing all that. And I don't know, maybe go be a cyclist or something. And like be right <laughs> who knows i just like training you know i just like training so like um you know i always like evolving and um yeah i want to be writing more and have more money and um be focused on like some different fitness goals wow 
So do you want to compete? Like become like get your pro card at all? You know, I don't know if it's like I I think I'm a really like genetically gifted, but I don't know that I'm uh that that's like um something I'm super passionate about or would be willing to take the steps to do. There's a lot more to that than especially than than a lot of guys really understand, I guess. Um especially being like a big tall guy, um like six one and there'd be a lot of um there's a lot of growing to do even to, to do that. Um but who knows? Like I don't i I'll definitely compete again um before I focus on like other fitnessy stuff. But um yeah. Uh who knows? I mean maybe I'll compete and be like, oh yeah, I did really well and then, you know, who knows, you know. Um but uh, definitely for the next few, I definitely want to keep getting bigger and more proportionate and stronger. I'll keep being a bigger, better bodybuilder. But I, I don't really care about competition bodybuilding too much as much as I just care about improving, you know. Wow. Okay. That's – once again, you're just – your answers impress me more than you know. No, I appreciate it, man. Did you – do you have an inspiration like when it comes to bodybuilding or someone you look up to or anything like that? Um, you know, like in terms of like minds for training, like my friends, my friends here in LA are like good mind minds for training. I always looked up to my dad in terms of like as a weightlifter. Um, I, I think I look up to like things like I look up to a lot of like people who are like eclectic athletes. Um, so I like a lot of guys like, even though he's a nutcase, like I always loved like Michael Hearn's physique and like, like, um, and that he's like a strong and that, you know, he never really competed, but he's just like, he has an amazing body and just like strong as hell and like, you know, pretty and kind of, so that, that kind of, like, I was always inspired by like that kind of, um, body, bodybuilder physique, you know, like not necessarily like a competition physique, but someone who clearly is like very high level and, um, you know, good at what they do. I was honestly guessing you were going to say Rich Piana. No, uh, he's cool. You know, I, as I've gotten old, I used to think he's a bit of a nutcase too, but I like, yeah. yeah, I think, I think Rich is cool. Um, I didn't, his, like, yeah, I guess like I like his, um, I like a lot about Rich, but I like, um, but again, I'd want to be like strong, like Mike is like strong and Mike's athletic, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah. but Rich was like a person was really cool. I think he was an interesting guy. Gotcha. Yeah, no, um, normally I don't mention this, but I, I'm going to mention this to you just cause I, I feel like it lines up with, you know, your goals and everything, but like. One uh, moment that I can remember when I first got into porn, I was reading an article about Jenna Jameson and she was saying when she retired, she had like eight years of content built up. Right. So like she still had weekly releases for eight years. And I remember when I read that, I was like, okay, yeah. So currently I'm at two and a half years. I could quit right now and I'd still have content for two and a half years. So I don't know, maybe that's something to, you know, yeah, that's something that's smart. Yeah, there's so much. Like everyone gives me so many good ideas and things to think about. With like, I'm just, like just now like waking up in terms of like, um, sex work and porn and um, becoming more motivated to do well at it, <laughs> like specifically, um, and mainly to like you know finance like fitness and like writing and whatnot. But um, yeah, for sure, there's a lot to that. But that makes a lot of sense. So, like, you talk about your writing a lot, like, would you be, like, what would be your favorite genre to write about? I write a lot of, like, um, yeah, you know, I don't know what I, I think my writing styles are kind of just, like, essay-driven and, like, um, like, journalistic um, and just autobiographical and also, like, satire. Um so like, and I like writing poems. I like writing like little for myself. Like I'll do like cute little like fantasies, short stuff, like, and mostly like kind of like, um, for kids sort of deal, like little comic things. Um, but I could never write like, I don't know how, like, like a Tolkien or someone does that. Like that's, it's, 
that's so impressive to me to be able to write like an entire like universe and yeah. just roll with that. Like, yeah, definitely nothing like that. <laughs> but there's like, to me. there's tons of writers who do like books of like short stories and stuff, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to, so I'd like to publish like, um, or kind of along the same style of like, you know, how, how everyone sees me, right? Like, that's kind of just like my voice and how I write and kind of like essay driven stuff and like autobiographical stuff. But I'd also like to, at some point, you know, I've talked to like some illustrators who would want to do like comics with me. Um, and that, that'd be something I'd like to do would be like cute comics, even my, even my little sisters, like I, she's a graphic designer and good at that stuff. But it's like, there's always so many things and it's like, I don't know when I'm going to do all of these things and like how I'm going to do them. There's a lot of life left to live, thankfully. That's why I'm like, I gotta get all this bodybuilding shit done so I can like, you know, and all this, you know, all this porn stuff done. I need to make money and like have it so I can focus on like other stuff, you know. Yeah, I'm. Usually, I don't ask this, but I, I really want to ask this to you. But where are you at, like, when it comes to religion or spirituality and all that? Because you'd kind of alluded to it earlier. Uh, you know, I think um. For me personally, like, I think approaching things, like, um, as objectively and logically as you can is important. So, I, you know, I, I make, like, a lot of, like, esoteric references to a lot of, like, um, witchy shit. Um, none, of, none of which I really, specific, like, give a lot of, like, literal meaning to. But um, I definitely... Um, yeah, I think just like connection, connection to some sense of like purpose um, is, I guess, what I mean by spirituality, um, and and I guess that can look like anything for anybody, um, and I, I don't have any like, well, I mean, I definitely have been kind of outspoken about a lot of um, traditional religions and like Western religion, but I think there's ways to practice those things in like wholesome and kind ways too, but. Um, yeah, not always the case, <laughs> sadly, but, yeah. That's true. Kindness seems to be, like, a really reoccurring theme with pretty mm -hmm. much everything you do. Like, wh where does that come from? Like, uh, you know, I, I know where it comes from for me, but I'm curious, where does that come from for you? Yeah, again, I think just, like, tied to, like, my general, like, meaning, you know, just, like, my intrinsic meaning, like, my purpose on earth, I guess that's what I guess again, like spiritually driven, like what's my purpose on earth? How am I going to feel about myself when I perish? Like what really matters? Like, it's like, it's not what people think about me or like my, you know, my nails being painted or me getting like fucked on camera. It's like, you know, what impact I've had on people. And like, if I've been kind to people for sure matters the most to me, um, the only things I've really regretted, I've, I haven't really regretted a lot um, in my life, but like being mean has certainly been one thing I've regretted <laughs> when I, you know, I could have been kind. Yeah, no, it, it just, <sighs> if I could recommend one book and only one book to you, it would be The Conquest of Happiness by Bertrand Russell. Okay. I think you would absolutely love that book. And it, it basically talks about, you know, the key to happiness being purpose, like having a mission, having, you know, that thing. And it just seems like that's really like, would I be correct in assuming that that's maybe not necessarily all, but one of the big factors that kept you on the straight and narrow is having that goal and that purpose and that mission. And I think so, yeah. You know, I think so. I think definitely having some kind of um, yeah, intrinsic purpose and exploring that for sure. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. So there are someone wanted you to know that uh, he's hoping you publish a book soon or 10. Oh, yeah, I saw that comment. Um, yeah, he's awesome. His, his uh, Twitter page is awesome. <laughs> So what does a, a day look like in – what is your typical day like? Oh, man. Yeah, kind of <laughs> absurd lately. It's just like I sleep a lot. <laughs> I'm so lucky. 
because I've just built my life around like training and sleeping and eating. So, um, yeah, I'm really low key. I train, sleep, and eat. Uh, sometimes I'll like, you know, I try to go on some dates, um, keep up with people I care about, text people, um, write, um, and then yeah, scheme like content, I guess, like scheme content I'm going to do, go on some walks here and there. But yeah. Do you have, do you have animals at all? No, I mean, I have a, I have a cat that lives with my ex, but I don't have any, I, I travel so much. I was like, you need to take this cat, but he's, he's, man, he's, his name's Twinkie. He's 18 now. So I got him when I was 10. <laughs> so he's like, he's like ancient for a cat. He's 18 year old. That's bad. So I'm assuming you moved to Vegas for work, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I moved originally there. Um, that was when I was like, I'm going to be a Chippendale and like, they were like going to hire me and. I like signed the contract and I slipped a disc in my back and I was like, all right, this isn't meant to be, <laughs> I guess it's all good. Uh, they were telling me they, they like the guys to be, um, they were like, you're too muscular. Like you're too big. They were telling me I'm too big and they wanted me to like trim down anyways. So I was like already looking for a reason not to do it because I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to bodybuild, you know, and like get, keep getting better at bodybuilding. So I was like, oh, this is a good enough reason not to do it. I can't move, <laughs> you know? So I'm curious, what do you prefer, like studio scene or your own content, like OnlyFans or whatever? I don't Why? Know. It depends on you know. It depends on. I love like I'm like sponsored by Kink lately. It's Kink. I love I love um, uh, working with some studios. Kink. I love um, I love the whole like performance nature of like and being kind of given like. And I could do that more with my own stuff, but like, I love the whole production of studio with, and it's like fun. Um, but I, I think I do like being able to choose my people that, and like with the amateur stuff and, and just like, it almost goes without saying like the amateur, that's where the money is. It's like the amateur stuff too. Like if you're doing it correctly. Um, and I think I, um, you know, I'm getting better at it again. Like I'm becoming more passionate about it, but sometimes I just need, like, it's easy to just be given a paycheck by a studio and be like, all right, good to go. You know, rather than like structure my, you know, making all the, the effort to like network and do all the, the amateur stuff. But, um, that, that advice I'd give to anyone too is definitely, um, yeah, the, the future is definitely all the amateur stuff. I mean, what goes without saying, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I make far, far more from my own content than any studio would pay. Right. It's just, it's, it's not even close. No, it's not even like, and for like, for the most, like, yeah, for people who are making it, like, there's not even, there's no reason to ever do studio. Like they couldn't give you enough money, you know, unless they were like, here's 20 grand. And even then, it's like, for a lot of people, even then, it's like, nah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because then you got to travel, and it's not just, you know, a couple hours of your time. It's three days, you know, right. whatever. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm curious, though. Do you ever, and I'm asking because I'm this way, do you ever get, like, really good ideas for your own, like, amateur content? You're like, yeah, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then you get there, and you're like, Fuck this. I'm lazy. <laughs> like, no, let's for, just... for sure. Especially, I mean, I just wish I had like, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, definitely, definitely, uh, that that's, I do a lot of just, you know, I, I just kind of go back to like what I like doing in my casual life and I'm like really vanilla and like intimate and like lazy. So, so like, that's a lot of my content. Um, but, uh, you know, someday, yeah, that'd be something I'd want to do too. Like on my list of shit I want to do is like direct and like I have all these visions of like beautiful scenes, but I need like a videographer who is like, and then like someone who can edit like really well and like whole production team. <laughs> but you know, nothing I could do on my own. I don't have that skill set, like even a little bit. I'm again coming from personal experience. Like I'm, I'm the same way too. In my private life, I'm very vanilla, very sensual and passionate. And 
why do you think that's the way you are in your private life when you've seen and done a whole lot more? What what grounds you back to that? I don't know. I think I'm just like, I don't know. I think I'm just like sweet. <laughs> like as much as I've tried not to be, again, back to like the turn, am I going to be a dick or like going to be nice and loving? Like, I think it's just like in my nature, I'm just like squishy, dude. So I think it's just like, how I am. Um, and I think my scene partners all know that about me too. I think that's why I've had success too. Cause I am just like, I care about my scene partners and not that people who are like, you know, rough can't care about their partners, but like, I, I don't know. It's just like, yeah, who I am. I have like some kinky things, but that even then like they're underlaced by like, I mean, obviously I do tons of like kinky shit, but even then it's all has undertones of like softness to it for sure and this is a question for me i'm genuinely curious how in god's name do you bottom when you have to eat as much as you do to maintain your size <laughs> so good a valid question i eat a lot of fiber i'm very regular with the fiber intake so i'm like i know like like i'm gonna go to the restroom at noon and then i'm good to go you know i'm like I think some people, they don't have like the, I have a healthy gut, <laughs> healthy, regular gut. It's my advice to be like, get your, get your like uh, nutrition in check, everybody <laughs> with the, the bottom. End. Cause I feel like, yeah, some guys are just eating like crazy shit and then you can't like, you don't know what your organs are up to. And one final question I had, and I was really curious, like you're probably the person I want to ask this the most. Cause like you used to have in your bio, like, non-toxic masculine I, I was curious like how would you define masculinity because there seems to be definitions going all over the place like all oh, masculinity is toxic and then you know what i mean uh -huh. like I, I feel like you would be a good role model yeah i definitely don't think all masculinity is toxic at all i think like anything toxic would be like in like i guess like um sort of these Western ideas surrounding masculinity that are like possession or like dominion over people. Um, yeah. But other than that, I feel like you can be like masculine in any way, like, cause it's also subjective. Cause like, I don't know what masculine is cause it is sort of just like a social construct, right? Like it is just like it changes and ebbs and flows with whatever society decides it is at any given time, like throughout history, like in any culture. But, um, yeah, I think like in terms of like right now, what masculinity means in our culture, uh, there's a lot of positive ways to be masculine. Um, I think just like allowing people to have like autonomy of their bodies and like, um, you know, not seeking like dominion over people would be that's the what comes to mind the most in terms yeah. of like no, negative for sure. masculinity. Gotcha. No, I seriously, dude, like. And I'm not the blowing smoke up people's ass type. I'm the type, if you're wearing an ugly shirt, I'll be like, dude, that shit's fucking ugly. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, like, I'm just beyond impressed. Like, most 40-year-olds don't get to where you're at here. I mean, if you keep doing what you're doing, Jesus. I can't even imagine what you'll accomplish by 40. Like, seriously, you, Wow. Oh, well, thank you, man. Is there any... Oh, last thing. For the people watching, where can they go to find your content? Anything else at all you want to plug? I guess, uh, so, I have a new Instagram. It's Davin, D-A-V-I-N underscore Stronk. So it used to be Strong, but now it's Strong. I had a new one. <laughs> so S-T-R-O-N-K. And then the Twitter is... Uh, dab and strength all one word um and i guess that's it and you can find my links to my other stuff on either of those pages you didn't say what your only fans and just for fans is they don't flag that oh well they i can say it. so it's dab and underscore strong for for that stuff and the, the links to that is on the twitter and instagram okay awesome yeah. and how would you describe you know your content um I do everything. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of like, it was the, I guess that's my Twitter thing. It's the world's most jacked hoe, right? It's the 
you know, I'm like an all-encompassing, like sexually fluid sort of a cover all bases. Um, I, you know, try to, for my audience, I know that they, they like to see me with the, the guys a little more. So trying to do a lot more of that, a lot of, but yeah, I do everything. So you can find, there's something for everyone and yeah. And it's a big muscular guy, the biggest one, the biggest, largest one in the whole industry <laughs> doing all of it. Awesome. Is there anything else at all you want to share? I don't think so. I think, yeah, this was awesome. Uh, seriously, you have, I, I've just, I'm blown away by your mindset, your mentality, your outlook, your, it's just, it's so rare to find people who are that positive and just nice and kind. And you know, it's just people, so many people are so jaded and bitter now. So it's, you have successfully renewed my faith in humanity. So thank oh, you. that's so sweet. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming, Devin. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> for those of you watching, I will list his Instagram and Devin's Twitter down below. Again, you can find all of his stuff. There's an all my links. It's the little website button on Twitter. Um, but yeah, seriously, thank you guys for tuning in. Hey guys, just want to say thank you for watching this video. And if you did really enjoy it, I just wanted to mention there are two ways that you can help to support this channel. On the right side, there are three little dots. If you click those, there is a super thanks button. And on the left hand side, there is a join button where you can join this channel. There are three different tiers of memberships. The top tier does actually allow one-on-one -on -one messaging with me via Discord. And I personally answer that it is not a service. That's just, you know, both of those are ways that you can help support me as a content creator in this channel. I mention this because YouTube is by far the thing that I enjoy doing the most. It's the thing I'm most passionate about. And unfortunately, a lot of the sexual videos the porn star confessions, the dom sub, all that stuff. It is not monetized due to the nature of the videos. But either way, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing week. I love you all.